Hi there, I'm Matt with UVI and I'm really excited to take you through a tutorial of the latest version of UVI Workstation. UVI Workstation is a free multi-timbral instrument that provides unlimited parts and integrated effects, live performance features, and a really great workflow for working with UVI compatible instruments. You can load up single instruments or you can load up multiple instruments, anything you want. Let's load up UVS 3200 and take a look at the presets. This is a library that can load up presets right from within the instrument itself. So I'll just click on this preset here and I'll drop it down. And I'll go to keyboards and pick out Dreamland Keys, one of my favorite patches on this instrument. A lot of motion and a lot going on with that instrument. Now, if I wanted to load up one instrument at a time, I could, but I can also make what's called a multi. I can load up other instruments and stack different libraries together. So I can load up multiple patches. So if I go to the multi screen here, you'll see I've got four different parts available and I can add more, subtract them from up here. And you can save your work too. So I'm gonna load up a multi that I've already created here. So this is just a multi that I created that uses four different libraries at once. I'll go ahead and load it up and you'll see I'm loading it off my computer's desktop right there. So I created this one myself. I'll hit okay and it loads it up. So as you can see, I've got four different layers to this multi. It's a little bit more complex and bigger than just a single synth. So you can get some really big and powerful sounds. Now I'll go back to the main window and just cycle through so you can see the different parts. So I'm in part one right now. You see I'm using a patch from Synth Anthology. If I go to part two, I'm using a little UVS 3200. Part three, I've got UVX 80. And I've even mixed in some, you know, real legit sounds in there with part four uh, using something from World Suite. So you can go ahead and mix and match all those different engines, all those different libraries in your UVI workstation and come up with some really, really great sounds. Now there's a built-in effects engine and arpeggiator for UVI workstation. So I'm going to open up the effects engine right now so we can take a look at that. So as you can see here, I've got a lot of different effects loaded up. I've got some choruses and phasers and delays and all kinds of stuff. And all of that is built right into UVI workstation. So with any one of these effects, I can, for example, unbypass the phaser and ratchet the speed up so you hear it a little more. Got that underwater effect, or I can take the delay and add a lot more feedback to it so that I hear more instances of that delay. So these effects are really useful to eke a lot more power and variety out of the patches, and they're really easy to use, and they're pretty easy on the processor as well. A lot of the instruments will have built-in quick macro controls that allow you to adjust the effects. So Synth Anthology, for example, does, and so do a lot of the other instruments. The powerful scripting engine of UVI Workstation allows for a different look and a real variety for every one of these instruments. So whenever you get a different instrument and you load it into UVI Workstation, it really has its own look and its own character. So I'm going to clear out that multi, and let's just talk about loading up and managing different instruments. So now that I'm sitting working with some clear parts, I will go ahead and load up a single instrument and look at some patches. So if I double click here at the top, it opens up the browser. Now that I've got the browser open, I can see all the different UVI instruments that I have automatically loaded. I'll get into how I automatically loaded them in a minute. So I'll just scroll down a little bit and find orchestral suite. And within orchestral suite, let's open up a classical guitar. And right there, I see the classical guitar patch. So with some of these, you'll see multiple patches there. And in this case, there's just one classical guitar. So I'll open it up there. Great, and I've got some different sounds in there. I've got some different layers going on. And as you can see in the red down there, I've got some key switches that can give me different versions of this particular acoustic classical guitar. So I can get some more sustain, some pizzicato. And I can switch on the fly as I'm playing. So really handy to be able to use that. 
So now, if I like this um, instrument and I use it a lot, I might want to have Orchestral Suite automatically load every time I open up UVI Workstation. It's not taking up memory, it's not loading up the sample, it's just automatically mounting the sample library for me. So with that, I'll click on here and I'll go to the Preferences menu. And from there, I can go to Sound Banks and I can choose where it's storing my sound banks. Now, of course, there's a default location when it installs, but for those of you out there, I'm sure there's a ton of you that have external sample uh, hard drives like myself, you're gonna wanna put your search path in there, and then you can decide whether you want it to go into subfolders, whether you want it to index it for the search, or whether you just want it automatically mounting every single time you open up UVI Workstation. So since I have put that folder in my auto mount area, when I go to the browser, you'll see all of those different instruments that are in the folder show up. If I go to the top here, I've got a little places tab. I go down there and I can load up, you know, instruments off my desktop or patches off my desktop, but I can also browse by device and go ahead and go to my samples drive, go to the UVI folder and load up the instruments individually that way. I just find it a whole lot easier to have UVI workstation automatically mount all of those UFS volumes right when I start things out. This way, I'm good to go. So that's one thing that you can do. Now, I'm gonna load up a second instrument just to show you how you assemble a multi. So I'll go to the multi screen here, and I see that I've got a few other parts, and they're empty. So I'll go to this second part. The first thing I'm gonna notice is that it's responding to MIDI channel A2, MIDI channel two, port A. And if I play notes, even if I load it up, you'll see right now the MIDI activity light is only blinking for channel one there, my first part. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna choose A1 so that every time I play, now both of those parts are being triggered, which is what I want. If you had multiple keyboards, then maybe you might wanna have you know one keyboard triggering something on one channel and one on the other. Or if you have a multi uh, timbral part that you're playing back, that might be something you wanna think about. So now that I've got it, it's ready, it's accepting MIDI, I'm just gonna load up an instrument there and I can double click right there, just as if I was opening the browser, and lo and behold, it opens up a little miniature browser down there at the bottom. So I've got access to my browser here as well. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and load up a second instrument. Let's go down to World Suite, and let's add some cool sort of uh, world vibes to this piece. So I'll go to the stringed instruments, and let's see something fun. How about the Moldovian Symbolum? And I'll open up the Space Symbolum. Yeah, it's got a lot of cool echoes in it. So some really interesting sounds now, and I'm crafting a patch that uses both of them. From here, I can pan it left and right a little bit. I can adjust the volume between them and really... create a really nifty patch. And I can adjust the octaves and semitones and the tuning of it. I can also adjust a couple of settings of it if I wanted to restrict the range. I just go to the settings button here. And now that I'm in the settings tab, I can pick the low key and the high key of each of those, uh, even the low and high velocity, so I can have it so that it only plays the classical guitar when I play really loud. And I can even assign a key switch to enable it. So there's lots of ways I can configure the sounds to be played back if I wanted to. Now, if I like this multi, I can go ahead and save it. So I click on this little menu here and I hit save multi. And from here, I'll get my little menu that allows me to drop down and save. I take that uh, particular, I can type it in and save it and call it whatever I like. And I could save it wherever I want. So I could leave it on the desktop and just call it guitar and symbolum. There we go. And now it's saved and I can open that up anytime I want to. Now, if I don't wanna save that multi necessarily, but I just wanna have access to that instrument for later on, so let's say I really like that classical guitar, and I'm not sure about this second instrument yet, but I know I really wanna use that guitar in this patch or use it over and over and over again. Well, there's a way that I can favorite that sound as well. So I'll open up the browser again, and I see that classical guitar, and I can right-click it and choose Add to Favorites. And what that does is it puts it in the search paradigm here. So if I scroll up to the top, under search. I'll close up some of these other ones just to get them out of the way. 
and I pick favorites right there, and you'll see, wow, there's my classical guitar. It has shown up as a favorite. It tells me what volume it's from. It's from orchestral suite, and it gives me all the information about that volume too. So you see I've got another favorite there. Maybe that one will work a little bit better in my multi. So just as an example of why I might want to have a favorite, I'll go back to the main page and go to part two, and let's get rid of this space symbol. And instead, I'll go to my favorites and choose this Fluddy Pad. Wow, now I remember why I grabbed that pad. It sounds really pretty. So add it in with that classical guitar and it's cool. So you can see the power of favorites. You can even reassemble and create your multis, um, you know, just by using some of your favorite patches. So even if you're not sure why you're going to want that patch, just save it as a favorite and use it for later. If you want to search through all of your available instruments for the perfect sound, or maybe you were playing something one day and you forgot to mark it as a favorite and you don't remember what library it's in, don't worry. Uh, UVI Workstation has a really powerful search algorithm. So simply go like you're going to load a patch, and I'll scroll up through all of those different libraries I have and go to the top where it says search. Now, normally I can go down, I've already shown you through your favorites, and see um, what favorite patches you have, and you can actually search those if you have a lot. So don't feel shy about favoriting a lot of patches. But I can go to my instruments and search through them. And you'll see that in addition to showing me what the name of the patch is, it shows me what volume that patch is loaded from. So for example, if I'm looking for a cool brass patch, I will see all the different brass type patches. I've got the synth brass patches as well as my orchestral brass patches right here in orchestral suite. So it's just looking for the different brass patches. Even the ones that don't have brass in the name, if they're tagged as a brass style patch, it's going to show up. So I've got my trombones, but I've also got my cool synth brass style sounds as well. So you just double click and load it from there and you're good to go. So you can go through your favorites that way and you can also go through the instruments in your library that way. You can also search through your loops and sounds that way as well. So you can really manage a lot of data using the search function of UVI Workstation. All right, I'm going to clear things out again. So I'll go to that menu and clear out this multi totally. And I'm going to load up another instrument. This time, I'm going to load up Meteor. Meteor is a really cool rise and impact library that'll give us a couple of fun things to play with. So the first thing I'm going to do is load up another patch. So I'm going to go to the cinematic ones. And under cinematic, let's pick up enemy ship. So I'll just trigger it here. Wow, that's really cool. And I think in the context of this futuristic piece I'm working on, it might be neat if it had a little bit of delay to it, and maybe even some triggered effects like a filter or something that swept a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and enable that kind of stuff. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the effects. Now I got no effects right now. To add a new effect, go to this little plus sign. And once that drop down menu opens up, I'll open up delay and I'm going to go ahead and go to an analog tape delay. All right, so now that I've got that delay loaded up, that's pretty cool, a little bit of delay, but I really want to jack it up a little bit. So I'll ratchet up the feedback just to get a few more instances. And then I'm going to just go over to this second page on the delay effect and adjust the wet signal to really give it some powerful echo. Wow. Well, now that that echo is so long, it would be cool to add an effect that lets me sort of modulate it in real time for a sound design type purpose. So maybe just a filter, something simple. I'll go ahead and add a filter, and I'll add the UVI filter. Let's just do a standard low-pass filter, something I can adjust the cutoff on and hear what happens. That's pretty cool, but I'm not as precise with the mouse with that. I really wish I could map it to one of my MIDI controllers. Well. Good news is you can, it's pretty easy to do. You simply right click any screen control you want to map, and now I can just touch the MIDI controller that I want to control that. And look at that, it instantly automatically maps it so I can play with one hand. And control with the other. Pretty cool. I'm going to clear that out and let's open up another multi. All right, now that I've got this other multi loaded up, let's take a listen.
So I've got two sounds, kind of like a static pad in the background, but a really percussive sound out front. And it makes me think that this would be a great one to play with the arpeggiator a little bit. So I'll go ahead and go to the arpeggiation page and I'll enable the arpeggiator. Now I'm going to right away load up an arpeggiation pattern. So maybe I'll just go in and go to the creative section and I'll take one like fake delay. I actually find this one to be very clever. So as you can see, we've got a lot of steps in this arpeggiator and they've already been pre-programmed to simulate a kind of fake delay. The volume and velocity of those steps starts to decay over time and it kind of creates a delay. So I thought that was kind of fun. Now you can cycle through and listen to different arpeggiation patterns just by using this menu here. Or you can just load up the patterns as you see fit. Click on the drop down menu and open up a pattern. I'll just open up a basic one. Well, basic as it gets anyway. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of the features of this arpeggiator, and I'm going to use a feature while I'm doing that. And the feature I'm going to use is the hold feature. So if I play a chord with the hold activated, it's going to, well, hold it for me. So now I can play with a couple of the buttons. I can go ahead and decide to give it a little bit more of an octave range. I can change the amount of strikes on each instance. And I can go ahead and change the mode. If I don't have to necessarily be going downwards, I could go up and down. It could zigzag a little bit. And if you're swinging, you can go ahead and adjust the groove amount to make it swing. It's a really, really powerful arpeggiator with a lot of different features. And it's pretty easy to draw in the steps as well. You just click in there and go ahead and adjust. And you can even drag with the mouse to draw curves if you want to and instantly adjust your arpeggiator. So again, it's super powerful, but really easy to use. You can save your patterns, you can do all kinds of different things, and you can also bypass it without having to get rid of all your work. So if you're not sure about the arpeggiator and you don't want to disable it and lose the things you're working on, you just quickly bypass it and get back to a normal sound. But then when you want it, unbypass it. and you're back in business again. All right, so finally, nice little bonus feature here. Let's talk about some of the sample playback features. I really like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear the multi, and let's look at how UVI Workstation handles a sample. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Mayhem of Loops. We'll grab a nice underground hip hop loop. Now, I can have it automatically play it if I want by hitting the autoplay button, so when I pick one, Makes it a little bit easier to audition them, but if you're not, if you know what you're looking for and you don't want them to automatically play, you just disable that button. So now that I've got it, I can go ahead and trigger it with the note C3. And of course I can have it play at its originally recorded tempo and not the synchronized tempo. And I've also got the sample triggering immediately, so I can restart it every time I hit the key which is kind of cool. That's the behavior I personally like, but depends if you're working in a sequence whether or not you want that to work. Now, I can map out every element of this loop. So there's a couple of things that are cool. First of all, drag and drop works. I can just go ahead and drag and drop this loop to the desktop, say, for example, and now I've got my rap beat going there as a wave file, and if I was using a digital audio workstation, I could drag and drop it in as a track. In fact, let's check that out now. All right, well now I'm inside of Logic, and I've got that loop loaded up once again inside of UVI Workstation. I can trigger it with a note, or I can have it automatically trigger when the sequence plays. So if I just click this button here for autoplay, when I play my sequence, the loop plays as well. Now I said I would show you that drag and drop functionality, so if I click this and drag and drop it into my sequence, you'll see that it just drops it in there as an audio loop and I am good to go. And I can use it, you know, just like I could any old loop inside of Logic. But there's a couple of other neat tricks up this software sleeve. Now if I go to map and I'm in slice mode, the sample is now sliced up and mapped across the keys. So if you take a look here as I play, like that, each element is a different key. 
And when you drag and drop in that mode, you're going to drag and drop MIDI. So I can go ahead and drop it in there, and you'll see that it drops the MIDI in, in this case. Which is cool because it allows me to go in and edit it if I wanted to. So I can move the instrument out of the way, double click, open up the MIDI track, and there's the elements. And I can take any elements out, repeat them if I want to, creating an entirely new remixed loop of my own, which is pretty neat. So you have the power to go in and just about work with just about every element of that loop. Now, you can also work in stretching mode as well. So if you have a loop that has pitched information, you can go ahead and play a note and feel free that you can jump up higher, pitch it up or down without losing the tempo information. So you're able to do that. And of course, you're able to jump up uh, in sample mode and change the pitch while changing the tempo. The flexibility is there and it's all up to you. So UVI Workstation is a really, really powerful instrument that once you wrap your brain around it, you can make the best use out of those UVI compatible libraries and get some really amazing sounds.